Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 23rd of June 2011. Fifty years ago this day, the Antarctic Treaty was signed. We set aside the Antarctic territories as a reserve for scientific study. Judging by the GOES plot, I think the best description of the sun at the moment is brain dead. We've had no major flares, or even minor flares for that matter, for the last 24 hours. The sunspot groups are at least giving us some hope for increased activity in the future. Region 1236, which is the largest region on the disk, has shown some growth of new spots ahead of the main trailer. Whether this is the emergence of a new region or part of the same region is another matter and will be decided later. But that, that's a promising sign. Region 1239 showed some minor growth last night, but is back to where it was about this time yesterday now. There is a new region emerging behind Region 1239, and we'll have to wait and see how well that region grows. Region 1240 in the south also shows some sign of growth. But I should stress, all this growth is with very minor, small spots, and is not the harbinger of major activity to come. Looking at the sunspot movie and magnetic movie from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, it's hard to see this growth because the sunspots are relatively small. If you want to see the details, I suggest you go to the SDO website and look at the images in high resolution. Moving on now to look at the transition region and coronal movies from SDO, we can see in the Helium 304 that there are several large filaments that are, look ripe to lift off, particularly one in the southeast. However, we've had no major eruptions in the last 24 hours. Though I expect by the look of these filaments that the low level of activity will not continue for very much longer. In the Corona movie, we see some very interesting loops on the east limb. These may be the first harbingers of the new regions that are returning in a day or two's time. However, they're not particularly high or dynamic, which probably means that at least the leading regions uh, that are returning are not all that impressive. Now looking at the coronagraph images from Soho, unusually we see very little activity which presumably reflects the lack of activity in the filaments and prominences as we just mentioned. As we've seen in the last few weeks, you don't need a flare to produce a coronal mass ejection. And the reverse is true as well. You don't need a coronal mass ejection to produce a flare. The solar wind data has changed dramatically. The density has increased, the speed has increased quite significantly, and the temperature has increased. Now this is not the effect of the upcoming coronal mass ejection that we were talking about the last couple of days. We're currently being affected by a high-speed solar wind stream from a coronal hole. Here's a picture of that uh, coronal hole. You can see it in the southwest quadrant as a dark area. Here I've shaded in and shown some of the open field lines. Along these field lines, the solar wind can escape at high velocity. And as the sun turns, these high-speed streams sweep past the Earth. They do this all the time. As the solar wind sweeps out of these coronal holes, it travels along in an almost perfect spiral, and so regions in the western hemisphere of the Sun are directly connected to the Earth. These high-speed wind streams can cause minor geomagnetic storms and aurora, and as we can see from the NOAA 15 data, the auroral zone is quite active, uh, <coughs> with the KP varying between 2 and 4. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 44, the X-ray background is at B1, the intensity of the radio sun is 93 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is up to nearly 600 kilometers per second with a density of about 2.8 protons per cubic centimeter and the KP index is varying between quiet and unsettled. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is not very different from yesterday's in that there's a chance of C flares but a very low chance of M or X flares. The sunspot number will remain low. Coronal mass ejections are still likely and there is a good chance of a geomagnetic storm within the next 24 to 48 hours. From the composite coronal image we can see that there are a few minor regions due back over the next few days over the east limb. However, the major region that's been producing all the activity on the far side of the sun is not due back for another four or five days. I have posted some useful links in the description box below. Uh, and if you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today or some of my global warming videos, go to my channel. The link is also listed in the box below.
The links to the three editions of the Sun Today that correspond to the same face of the Sun that is there now are listed in the box below. This is for the 27th of May, the 30th of April and the 3rd of April. Today's featured global warming video is a discussion of whether 1934 was the hottest year on record, as some claim. That's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.